Hey everyone, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Lo-Fi House chord synth. So, this is a pretty simple sound to make, but there's kind of a few techniques going on, or there are kind of a few techniques going on, that I want to show you, because I think they can be applied to a lot of different scenarios, not just this one, and hopefully I can help you figure this stuff out for your own productions. Anyway, so I'm going to start off with the types of chords we're using. As you may notice, these aren't just regular major or minor triads. These are actually major and minor ninth chords. Um, and what a ninth chord is, is it's essentially a chord where you start with like a basic triad like this. So like for example, we have F minor here. And then you add a seventh and a ninth on there and you get a ninth chord. And then what determines whether it's a major or minor ninth chord are essentially whether the third and the seventh of the chord are major or minor. So in this case, for example, with this F minor nine, the third is minor and the seventh is minor. So we have an F minor nine. In this case, in with this chord, we have an F, we have an F sharp major nine, and again we can determine this because the third is major and the seventh is major. Um, and then down here, this is also a minor nine chord. So this is something I want to touch on a little bit. For Lo-Fi House, these kind of chords are very important, like these sort of jazzy '90s house kind of chords um so i definitely recommend you know looking into seventh chords ninth chords eleventh chords all that kind of stuff because it'll really help you take your sort of chord voicing to the next level you know like you could kind of just use regular triads for this but it doesn't have quite the same sauce as when you add on the the seventh and the ninth I'm making a ninth chord. Those higher notes really give it kind of like a nice sort of, almost like melancholic kind of feel. Like, it's kind of strange because minor and major seventh and ninth chords kind of do the opposite of what you would expect them to. Like a minor seventh or a minor ninth is kind of like a happy chord. And then a major ninth or a major seventh is kind of like melancholic. Like it's not quite sad, but it's definitely not just like a happy major chord. Um, so yeah, definitely knowing those kind of like jazzy chord shapes is pretty important here. It's something I definitely recommend looking into for Lo-Fi House. Now as far as the sound design goes, this is again pretty simple. I mean, it's mostly based on this FM synthesis patch I made in Operator, which I'll show you. And you can get the project file and preset and MIDI from this for free in the description as well. So make sure to check that out if you want to use this for your own tracks. Um, but yeah, so all it is is basically just this operator patch. It's two sine waves, very simple. Um, the first one, yeah, just a sine wave. The second one is also a sine wave. I believe I played a little bit with the envelopes. Yeah, okay, so this is the envelope of the first one. This is the envelope of the second one. So kind of more of like a hit than like a long sort of sound, if that makes any sense. Like I was going for more, not necessarily of like a pluck, but, like, as you can see, this does have the decay that goes down. So it's got more of, like, it kind of rings out and then just sort of slowly goes down in volume as opposed to being, like, a fast pluck. Um, I also turned the second oscillator's um, course pitch up to two, so it's an octave higher than the first one. And, yeah, pretty simple there. The only other thing I did inside of Operator is this LFO here, which is actually something I do want to talk about because I think this is kind of an important effect that you could use a lot for lo-fi house synths, and that is this pitch LFO. So if you notice, this LFO is on, and it's routed to the pitch of oscillator A and B, um, but we obviously have the amount very low at 5%. So as you guys may or may not be familiar with, a popular effect in like lo-fi house and like lo-fi music in general, and like vaporwave and all that kind of stuff, is sort of like the warbly kind of like pitch sort of drifting sound um and a good way to accomplish this is with this lfo so what you do is essentially route it to the pitch of your oscillators and then just have it be up very little like you never want to go past maybe like six or seven percent with this um i'll show you i'll start turning up while it's playing so you can see once you get up high like that it kind of just starts being more of like a one kind of like laser sound you know you don't really want that you just want this nice subtle like i said kind of like warbling on the sound um and yeah and then 
I mean, that's pretty much it for that. It's a pretty simple effect. But that one's definitely pretty important for doing the kind of lo-fi sounds. So the next thing I have on here is this chorus. And this chorus is set, it's really just giving it a bit of stereo width. Um, but if you'll notice, it's very subtle. I have the dry wet down pretty low, and the feedback down pretty low. The rate is very slow. I like slower rates with these kinds of things for Lo-Fi House, because I think it just kind of is more true to that sort of like analog cassette-y kind of sound, if that makes any sense. Um, but the amount is all the way up. So it is doing quite a bit. It's just subtle, and with that dry wet, you're able to sort of dial in the effect without having to do too much. Um, yeah, so the next thing I have on here is this EQ8. It's pretty simple. It's just cutting on some of the high end. And really, mostly what it's doing, I'll show you without it. So it's not cutting out much, but mostly what it's doing is making this little bump here, which is getting sort of accentuated by some of the other stuff here. Um, mostly the saturator. But yeah, this bump is just kind of like giving the saturator a little bit more in that particular range. Um, so that frequency range is going to get more distorted, and it just kind of helps to give it that crunch that I like for Lo-Fi House. And yeah, it's definitely a good technique as well to use when you're making these kind of synth sounds. Um, so the next thing I have on here is this Clip Slap Analog preset for Ableton's Echo, but I actually did a few things to it. So this Clip Slap Analog is a really nice preset. It comes stock with Ableton's Echo. Um, it's under the Vintage Delay thing. It's right here. It's this one. But... There's two changes I made to it, and two changes that you kind of have to make when you're working with it. So the first thing is, you may or may not be able to hear, but you can definitely see in the little VU meter here, that little green thing. What that is, is there's this noise turned on. So you have to turn that off. Um, if you don't know, this noise is just sort of supposed to sound like an analog sort of tape machine and the background noise it would have. But because even like that, it's kind of just annoying in the background and we don't need it. I just turn that off. And then one more thing is you'll notice this is very loud and distorted. And the reason for that is because this input is turned up a bunch. Um, I think that's where it gets the name Clipped Slap Analog. Um, so I just turn that back down to default. And there we go. You just have like a nice kind of quick slap delay. Um, and yeah, this is another, actually, this preset is very good for Lo-Fi House. I use it a lot when I'm making Lo-Fi tracks. I recommend using it on things other than just, like, chord synths like this. Um, and the last thing I have on here, you know, you know I had to do it. A bit warmer. It's just a nice saturator preset. Um, if you don't know, it's a famous preset for Ableton Saturator. Like I said, just sounds very nice for stuff like this. It kind of like crunches up the sound in a nice way without going too hard and without getting like too out of control. You just get that nice kind of analog warmth over everything. And you can hear it beefs everything up a little bit too. Um, so yeah, that's really it for this video. I mean, the main thing is, like I said, the sort of jazzy kind of chords. That definitely will get you like a lot of the way there. Um, and then definitely, like, the simple FM synthesis, the pitch LFO, and then playing around with the echo and the saturation will really kind of get you that lo-fi sound um, without having to use too much kind of, like, analog modeling or analog gear or anything like that. Like, as you can see by this tutorial, you can do it all in the box with stock Ableton stuff. So yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure you get the project file and presets and MIDI from this video in the description for free. And I will see you guys again tomorrow with another tutorial.